Hello, it's me, Ariza Gaming. Welcome back to another episode of Sandbox Showcase, a series where we talk about problems in Oxygen Not Included and how you can solve them easily and efficiently. So today I'm going to talk about the Aluminium Volcano and how we're going to tame it in a bit of an unconventional way. So this volcano produces lots of hot refined metal as a liquid and for the Aluminium Volcano in particular, even though the temperature it comes out at is about 1700 degrees and lower than other metal volcanoes, the aluminium itself has a very high heat capacity of 0.91 compared to all the other refined metals, which are sort of ranging from 0.1 to 0.4. So this volcano produces a lot of heat. And whenever I see one of these, I think to myself, boy, this is a really easy way for me to boil polluted water and salt water that's on the map. You might be on a swampy asteroid where you have very large amounts of polluted water that you just want to get rid of because it's taking up loads of space. You might have a subsurface ocean, which is covered in cold salt water that you eventually want to process. You can run cold salt, uh, salt water through a desalinator. Uh, that does take a fair bit of power. And the way we're gonna do it here is gonna be power neutral to power positive, and you'll get the cool metal out of it as well. So I generally prefer doing this to desalinators late game. Early game, a desalinator is fine, but um, it's, it's a good opportunity to both cool down your metal and extract clean water from the salt water and the polluted water on your asteroid, or even from a geyser. So, how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, let's clear out a bit of a space. It would help if I went in sandbox mode. So, we'll just clear out some tiles here. You'll want to do all of this in a vacuum. So, if the volcano is buried, you'll want to make a bit of a vacuum by tiling in tiling in an area sealed by a liquid lock using tiles to delete the gases as you go and then dig out the vacuum from there or you can just pump it out with a gas pump it's all it's all good but we'll clear out a bit more space over here this doesn't take a huge amount of space i just want to make sure i've got enough space to start with so what we're going to do is we're going to put down some insulated tiles because first of all we're going to contain this volcano and its heat so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put them on this neutronium tile here the, the volcano will always spawn slightly to the left, so you'll put the insulated tile and the neutronium there. You'll go four tiles high, and then you'll make a sort of ten wide strip, like this. And we're going to put the two steam turbines on top. So, because the aluminium volcano generates so much heat, I'm going to actively cool these steam turbines. You can, you can run this with self-cooled steam turbines, but you'll need at least four of them. Well, you, you'll need up to four of them, depending on the output of the volcano. But we're going to actively cool this because these turbines will generate enough power in the right conditions to run the aqua tuner and that way we can get the metal really cold as well so we're going to put those there and then where the tile comes down we're going to put in a little bit of a liquid lock so that's just going to go like this for the insulated tiles this tile doesn't actually have to be insulated we can make this a metal tile i'm going to make this aluminium just because we've got the aluminium volcano here so that can go there and you want to form a vacuum lock with this with this room to make sure none of the heat from the steam leaches out into the environment or as little as possible so what i like to do is i like to put in two bottle emptiers like this and then i like to dump a little bit of crude oil in here um, you'll definitely want access to crude oil for this for reasons i'll explain later but just pump like say five kilograms into both of these and you'll end up with something like this and then you can remove this bottle emptier. You'll need to do it from both sides to make sure you've got a little bit over here. And then if we let that, if we let that just drip down, you'll see it forms a vacuum when the crude oil dissipates. And what that will do is that will stay a vacuum, provided you're not taking something that off gases through here, and provided you don't take something through here that's going to boil the oil, <laughs> which you shouldn't be doing under any circumstances with this build. So. The steam will stay in here, the heat will transfer to this oil, but it won't transfer through the vacuum, and it will very minimally transfer through the insulated tiles. So overall, there's going to be relatively little heat leak on this. So then the plan with the volcano, what we're going to do is we're going to put an airflow tile here, and just to get the room started while the volcano is dormant, again, we'll put a bottle empty here, and we'll dump a pretty large amount of salt water, don't use polluted water for initially loading it. You can use clean water, but the aim of this build is to process all of the random liquids on your asteroid, especially if you're on a classic start. 
So I would just fill this with salt water or brine. Brine will do as well. Um, but you'll just want to fill this as much as possible. We're ultimately aiming for a steam pressure of about 20 kilograms per tile in here to maximize air, air um, the heat capacity of the air. But so let's say fill it with let's say fill it with 250 kilograms on each of these three tiles, and then remove this bottle empty when you're done. So put that down there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dump oil on the rest of this. And this is very important because what we're going to do is we're going to use the oil to speed up the heat transfer to the liquid we're trying to boil. And to cool down the metal that's running through this volcano tamer. So you want to put a, a fair bit of it. It doesn't need to be too much. Um, just enough that it's not going to accidentally boil. I'd say 20 kilograms is probably fine. You don't need this to have too much heat capacity. So 20 kilograms of oil in here. You can go higher if you want. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to dump the polluted water or whatever we're dumping in here onto onto the tile. So we're just going to dump it right here. Far away from the volcano, but over here near the uh, near the metal tile. And then we're going to get all the plumbing sorted out. So the plumbing is a little bit complicated. To simulate our water source, we're going to put in a dev pump that just pumps out some polluted water. So we'll set this to... We'll set this to polluted water. You can do this with salt water as well. I'm going to do it with polluted water because there's some extra stuff I'm going to put in here just to handle the polluted water. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our... We're going to have our water source and what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to a valve. This doesn't necessarily need to be insulated, but I'm going to insulate most of these pipes just... You'll want to insulate all the pipes going around here except for the thermal pipes, so I'm just going to use insulate pipe for everything. So we'll put a liquid valve here, and what we'll do is we'll set this to 4 kilograms per second, because we've got two steam turbines that are going to output a total of 4 kilograms per second of liquid. Um, so we're going to dump the water into the room at the same rate that the steam turbines are going to take it out to make sure the room doesn't fill with steam. You don't want too much steam in here because then the volcano won't erupt. And also you don't probably want to have all that water just hanging around the steam turbine when you could be using it for something else. So then we're going to send that over here. It's going to come down here and then we're going to bring it over here. Now, we've got, a we've got the output pipes for the steam turbine as well. And I'm going to set up this pipe work in such a way that when there's no wastewater to boil, it just sends the steam turbine output back into the room to recirculate. So even if you run out of water to boil, this will still run as a conventional volcano tamer on a closed loop. But if you do have any wastewater to boil, you can you can shove it in with priority instead. So what we'll do is we'll take the we'll take the output here. We'll run it straight over here. This this doesn't need to be conductive. So we'll we'll put that here. And then we'll just hook that up onto the end of this bridge. And then both the steam turbines will output down here. And we're gonna we're gonna seal this off. This is gonna be a sealed room as well. Uh, but I'll get more into the details of that later. We're gonna make that room four high and remove this. Just clear a bit more space. There we go. So the pipe for the cold water, or the pipe for the steam turbine output is going to come down here. And what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a bridge on here. So the bridge is going to output after the valve in the pipe. So what this will do is it will prioritize the dirty water from wherever it's coming from. And then if there is no dirty water, then it will load the clean water from the steam turbines. And then this is the pipe where if we are loading on clean, wa uh, dirty water, the clean water will come out here and then we'll just say fill a tank over here. So liquid reservoir, um, obviously don't make that out of something that's going <laughs> to overheat. You'll probably be sending this to your electrolyzers. It's hot water and we're not cooling down the steam turbine output. So we're probably going to just send it to an electrolyzer. So there we go. I can fill that up. So then we've got our input water that's going onto the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to send it up here 
and we're going to put a bridge here. Uh, again, I'll explain this later. So that bridge is going to come here. And then we're going to start the water loop going through. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to send this underneath underneath uh, the steam turbine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lower it a level. We're going to send it two more over. And then we're going to send it down here. Now, <laughs> this room gets a bit cramped with all the stuff we're going to put in it. So if the pipework doesn't make yet sense yet, it will in a minute. So just bear with me. It's going to go in there, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to feed it to the vent. So this is going to dump the water on the oil. And it's important to note that liquid to liquid contacts in this game have 625 times the thermal conductivity of other interactions. Solid to gas is a 25 times multiplier, but liquid to liquid is, is 625. Any water we put in here is going to boil as soon as it comes into contact with the hot oil. And that's what you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to dump it in here, but we're going to be turning this vent on and off to maintain sort of even temperatures and pressures in this room. So if the water doesn't go through the vent because it's disabled, it's going to go up here, and then we're going to put another bridge in here. So that's going to come down here. And then what we're just going to do is we're just going to send this up here, and we're just going to loop it around. So all that's going to do is it's going to go through this room, you can send it through this insulated tile if you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it through the insulated tile just to minimize heat transfer in this room. And then that is gonna come back down here with another bridge. So that bridge is gonna bypass all of that stuff. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down one more and then we're going to put in another bridge. And what we're gonna do is then we're gonna connect the pipe up here. So it's gonna go up from that output into this output. And what that basically is going to do is if liquid is coming in, like the pollutive water, and it can't vent, it's just going to circle all the way around here. It's going to get to this bit, and it's going to load onto the pipe before it loads on here. So what this will do is it will prioritize recirculating the liquid in here, as opposed to loading new liquid from wherever it's going. And the reason we're doing this is to make sure that you haven't got liquid sitting around in pipes that could eventually burst. If we keep it circulating, then it's not going to be sitting in the room long enough to burst. So that's why we're doing that. It shouldn't burst anyways if you use better um, insulated materials like ceramic or insulation. But this way you can do it with igneous rock and you could be reasonably sure it's not going to burst even if you're not getting any water boiled for a while because it's just going to keep circulating. So that's those pipes. And that's the whole, that's the whole management system for... Dirty water going in and clean water coming out, or being recirculated. What we're then going to do is we're going to have the actual steam turbine cooling loop. So that's going to go in here. Again, I'm going to make this pipe out of aluminium because we've got the aluminium volcano here. You can make this out of lead at first, but wherever I'm building something out of aluminium, you can generally build it out of... You can build it out of lead if it's in this room, or if it's in the room of the volcano, you can build it out of copper or some other refined metal you have. I wouldn't recommend building stuff in here with lead in general, just in case uh, just in case something breaks midway through and you have a load of hot aluminum everywhere. Because <laughs> you don't want your conductive wires melting or your automation wires melting or whatever. So we're going to put some radiant um, aluminium pipe up here. And that's just going to come like this. So we're going to send that here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cool this. We're going to cool these steam turbines with the thermo aqua tuner. So that pipe is going to come down here. It's going to go down here. We're going to send it through here. You know, I'm beginning to think if the pipe is actually running through here, let's put an insulated tile here after all. <laughs> Like, I think the the only reason you want to put an insulated tile there is because this pipe is running through it. And even if it's insulated pipe, if it's running through a metal tile, you're going to get some heat transfer. So we'll do that. And then we'll send that pipe here. And what we'll do is we'll put a liquid pipe thermocentral in this. So again, we'll make this out of aluminium. And that is going to go to the thermo aqua tuner and turn it on and off. Now, you can make this out of... Uh, gold amalgam to start and run this room at sort of 125 degrees but bear in mind that's not going to let the uh, steam turbines power the whole setup 
So if you build it with a gold amalgam aqua tuner at first, eventually you're going to want to replace it with a steel one. I would probably just build it with a steel one right away. It's, I would argue it's usually easier to get to steel than to start building something like this. So we're going to make it out of steel and we're going to run the room at 200 degrees C. So this pipe is going to go in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to automate the thermo aqua tuner. Again, we'll use some aluminum automation wire. And we're going to tell this, we're going to tell this to activate if, if the water in here is above the coldest temperature we want it to be at. So let's just say minus five. We want this to basically cool the liquid down until the point where it would freeze. And we're going to be filling this loop with the polluted water. I would recommend filling this loop with a little bit of polluted water, regardless of whether you're going to end up dumping salt water or polluted water into the room. Um, but once you've filled the loop, then you can start dumping your salt water. And I'm basically setting up this pipe in such a way that you can just build all the pipe and then just plug in your water source and all the loops will fill to the right level without having to worry about it. So we're going to build that there. This is set to above minus five. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have the pipe come out of the thermo aqua tuner but what we're going to do as well is we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna seal this with insulated tile first of all and then we're going to send the pipe down here around and then we're gonna bridge it on up here so again what this is going to do is it's just going to make sure that um, the liquid from the aqua tuner that's being cooled is prioritized over the liquid that's being recirculated. So this is always going to try and cool down the liquid and until it's at the target temperature. And then if it's at the target temperature, then it will just bypass instead. So that's what we're doing. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to send this up with another bridge that's going to go here. This is why we made that kink earlier. And then that is going to go over here and it's going to feed onto the other end of the radiant pipe and thus cool everything down. And the final the final bit that we're going to do is we're going to put another liquid bri uh, bridge in, but we're going to do it from the, um, the pipe of dirty water. So this is going to load the cooling loop with the dirty water, but because this bridge output is after this bridge output, it will fill the cooling loop with polluted water It'll fill the cooling loop with polluted water until it's full and then this bridge will stop doing anything because the loop is full and then it will just and then it will just keep recirculating so this way we can just build all the pipe work and then it will just fill up everything to the right level on its own but obviously you want to make sure that you're starting it up with polluted water and then switch to dumping salt water if you need to so that's it that's all the pipe work <laughs> It's a little bit, a little bit complicated, but you'll uh, see why I've done this soon. So next up, let's do, let's do all the conveyor rail stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in an auto sweeper. This needs to be made out of steel. As I said, you shouldn't really be doing something like this until you've got steel. This is going to be a steam room and it's going to be a hot steam room. And the aluminium or, well, whatever metal you've got with a... Um, an overheat bonus isn't going to cut it because this room's going to be at 200 degrees C. You need steel. So we're just going to put that right here. And that's going to load on A, the hot metal that's going to come out of the volcano once it's turned into debris. And B, any dirt, any, um, any dirt that you get from boiling the polluted water or any salt that you get from boiling salt water. So it's very important. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to put the conveyor loader directly underneath it. Um, so that's going to go here with the port at the bottom. That's going to be sat in the oil for extra conductivity. And then what we'll do is we'll just start building all of the conveyor rails. Now, what I would suggest is just to build all the conveyor rails out of steel near where the aluminium volcano is, just in case something goes wrong. So these ones will make it of steel. Everything else can be made out of a normal metal like copper for instance. So what we'll do is, what we'll do is we'll pull it out of here first and we're gonna send it up here past the insulated tile, past the liquid vent. And then we're gonna put a conveyor rail thermosensor on this. 
So we're going to put the conveyor rail thermo sensor here, and then we're going to put a conveyor shut off here. Now this shut off can be made of any metal that's not going to melt. You could you could possibly make this out of lead. I wouldn't recommend putting anything lead in a room with a metal volcano. So we're just going to make it out of aluminium again. So that's going to go down here. But this this building will never overheat. It's the only shut off that doesn't overheat. So just bear that in mind. And then we're going to plug the conveyor rail into the end of it. And then we'll, we'll get to the output in a minute. But then we're just going to recirculate it back into this room. We're going to run it under the steam turbines. You'll notice that we're running the material initially through the oil. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll actually run it this way as well. So we'll run it past all of these tiles, all of these five oil tiles to bleed out as much heat from the solid debris as possible. Because the liquid oil is going to be way more conductive with the debris than the steam is. So then it's going to detect the temperature of the material and if it's if it's below the target temperature, which in this case is going to be 200 degrees C, then we'll activate the conveyor shutoff and that'll send it to the next stage to get cooled down further. But if not, it's just going to be recirculated and all we need to do is just send it down here. Just make a loop so that it, the debris is hanging out on a loop that's as long as possible. Runs past all the steam, helps e e equalize the temperature. That's going to go over here. And then when we get to this bit here, you don't connect the wire over the top of the loader to the bottom of the loader. Instead, what you do is you put in a conveyor bridge. That goes here. So the output is directly underneath the output of the loader. And then you drag the conveyor belt up. And again, what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that the loop prioritizes recirculating overloading new material. So that way you're going to keep the material circulating until it's cold enough. Then you'll move it on and then you'll load in the next lot of hot material. And what we're going to do as well is we're just going to put in some temp shift plates. Now you can make this out of anything that's not going to melt. Obviously don't put aluminium temp shift plates behind this because they're obviously going to melt. I would recommend diamond. Um, you can find diamond pretty easily in the oil biome. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to put them on the tiles around here. Uh, we don't want them to overlap the insulated tiles. That will probably do. We don't really mind if this insulated tile gets quite hot. So we can put some temperature plates here as well. The important part is that it's not conducting heat with the, with the liquid in the pipe. So that should be fine. And we'll put some temperature plates up here as well to help out these steam turbines. Those don't have to be diamond, they could be something else. So now we've done that, what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with a load of sub 200 degrees debris coming out of here. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring it up here and then we're going to put the bridge here. And we're just going to run it past the steam turbines. So it's just going to go like this. And we'll run it, we'll concertina it up here as well, just to use up that whole bit. And then we'll send it up here. And what we'll do as well for extra conductivity is we'll just dump some crude oil in here. So it doesn't need to be a huge amount. 20, 20 kilograms per tile should do. We'll put some petroleum on top of that as well. The liquids are just a lot more conductive than the gases. So we're just going to do this to make sure that the steam turbines are getting cooled down nice and easy. And then we'll fill the top up with hydrogen. Hydrogen gas is quite conductive and it has a lot of heat capacity. So that's what we do. You only want a little bit of liquid in here because you don't want these steam turbines to flood. But the gas we can have going up to 20 kilograms of tile. So we'll just put this up here. And then what we'll do is I'll just I'll just put in a high um, a high pressure gas vent. You can hook this up to wherever you have any hydrogen, such as from your electrolyzers, and just fill the room up like that without any issues. And then in terms of the conveyor rail, what we'll do is we'll send that here, we'll put another conveyor rail thermo sensor on here, and then a con another conveyor shutoff. That can go there. And then this room is being actively cooled by the thermo aqua tuner. So that's going to go that's going to go below 30 degrees C. It's going to go below room temperature. So we'll set this to send green signal if below room temperature. And again, we'll put some automation wire on that. Did I automation wire this? I didn't. There you go. And then if the material is too hot and it's going to be too hot in here for a while, but we'll want to recirculate it. So we'll just send it up here again through the insulated tile. 
then what we can do is what we can do is send it down here and then what we'll do is we'll just have it bridge on here again and the reason we're doing this whole double bridging thing is just to make sure the loop the loop recirculates and because this bridge at the end is at the beginning of this pipe it will prioritize recirculating overloading the new material so the 200 c the 200 c metal and dirt and stuff is going to wait here and then it's going to get loaded on here once all the cold stuff comes out and we'll just dump the we'll just dump the cold stuff over here like let's just uh let's just dump it here so that's all going to come out of room temperature and that's basically all of the conveyor rail setup that you need so the last thing to do there's there's two more things to do that first of all there's all there's the rest of the automation we're going to want to automate the steam turbines. We only want these to activate if they're if the steam pressure is high enough. You want to maintain a good amount of steam pressure in here. A for thermal mass, so that it maintains roughly the same temperature. And B, so that if you're dumping polluted water in here, it doesn't have a chance to off-gas. Because it'll try and off-gas as soon as it comes out of this vent. And you want to make sure there's so much pressure that that never happens. So I'll put the ammo sensor here. Put the ammo sensor here and we'll just send some automation wires around like this so there you go and we're going to set these to above twenty thousand. that's the max that you can set for these ammo sensors without any mods um it's good enough it's good enough to maintain an even temperature in here but don't activate them unless you've got a lot of steam in here and then i think that's actually most of the automation Oh, right. The thermosensor, yeah. So we need to put a thermosensor in here to tell the liquid vent that's dumping the dirty water um, on or off. So we'll just put the thermosensor here, this little gap here I left, and we'll just send that wire up here. And we're going to activate this if the oil is above 200 degrees C. So if the room is getting hotter than the target temperature, we'll dump water in here. So that should be fine. And then the last thing that we actually need to do is actually set up what we can do. Th this should work on its own, but what we'll do as well is we'll set up a backup gas pump in this space just in case some polluted oxygen gets in here. And you can even use this gas pump to empty the room when you're vacuuming it out. So if you build it here to begin with, you can just leave it in this room and it will work fine. So we'll, you'll definitely want to make this gas pump out of steel. So that's going to go here. And then we'll have a gas element sensor up here. We make this out of aluminum. And then we'll just... Oh god, I said aluminum. No! Um, we'll send this up here. And we'll just bridge over this insulated tile. Never bridge between insulated tile. That leaks a lot of heat. If you're going to do bridges, always do them in the tile. So it's going to go here. And then we're going to set this to detect polluted oxygen. Because that's the only gas that's going to end up in here. Um, yeah. So if any polluted oxygen ends up in here, it's going to rise to the top and try and block the steam turbines. And this is a fairly out of the way tile. So if the polluted oxygen gets here, it should get pumped fairly quickly by this pump. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to set up uh, some very simple relative to this automation. We're going to have a regular gas pipe. This is very important because you want this to conduct heat. Um, you want a gas pipe element sensor down here. So that's going to go there. We'll set up some automation wire as well. And that is going to go to a gas shutoff. We'll make this out of steel. And then what we're going to do is we're, we're going to set this to polluted oxygen as well. And then this is going to activate when it detects polluted oxygen. So we're just going to send that straight past here and we're just going to dump it out here into the environment. And then the if we uh, the other steam that gets pumped in inevitably with all of this stuff, we're just going to send to the other side of the room and we're just going to recirculate. So that's the other reason why you want this room to be sort of below 20, 20 kilograms. Let's actually set it to 19 kilograms just so that... Uh, not 19 grams... 19 kilograms, just so that if we do get any steam in this pump, it can exit without too many issues. Yeah, just below 20 kilograms is what you're looking for. 
And then I believe we've got the automation set up for that, so that's fine. So that is just in case you get some polluted oxygen here, and you can build this and and have it run to vacuum out the room to begin with as well. So now what we're going to do is we're, gonna, we're just going to set up the regular wires. And what I would say is at the start with this room is is building up, you'll want to have you want to have all of this be on a separate wire to the steam turbines because the steam turbines aren't going to be able to power it at first. So let's just send it down here. Yeah, let's just send it down here. And then the steam turbine wire will go here. I'm going to put a battery here just to demonstrate that this build will run itself uh, once it gets hot enough, once it gets to the target temperature. So I'm just going to build this out of steel, whatever. So those steam turbines are going to go into the battery for now, and we're just going to set up a dev pump for now, just to show uh, a dev generator for now, just to show you how it works. So there we go. And then I think, I think this is all ready. So let's actually turn it on for a second. We need to set this, we need to set this to accept any materials. None of this stuff is running at the moment, that's fine. So the polluted water is coming in here. That's going to go on the bridge here. And that is going to enter the loop. And we'll speed this up a little bit. So you can see it's prioritizing filling the cooling loop. So it's going to fill the cooling loop first with polluted water. And we'll speed through it. Our poor dupes are just sat by the printing pod. So it's going to go through here and then that's going to immediately get aqua tuned. Because it's above, it's above the target temperature for the steam turbine room. So then that's going to recirculate onto here. And you'll notice that this is going to stop pumping once the loop is full. So now the loop is full, we're not getting any more input water. And that's sitting in here. And the reason that's sitting in there is because I forgot to rebuild this pipe. <laughs> so if I just... Yeah, so if I just do this and reconnect this up. So you'll see this is going to fill again. So the polluted water is going to fill here so it recirculates. That way there's no water just sitting in the insulated pipe to potentially burst if it, if it never ends up moving. So that's going to come all the way around here and go over this bridge. And then because of how we set these bridges up, this loop will keep circulating and this pump will stop. So the valve will keep working. Also, this hasn't been set to 4,000 kilograms yet. Uh, you actually need a dupe to come here and set this, so we're just gonna we're just gonna go grab a dupe. Here's Lindsay. Congratulations, Lindsay. You're part of the colony. So this has been set to four thousand now. This volcano is just about to erupt. We've actually timed this somewhat well. So we'll see what happens. As you can see, the room is fairly cold, so we haven't dumped any looted water in here yet. Uh, but let's speed up and wait for the volcano to erupt. Someone's made a mess. Yep, that's a good sign. Actually, you know what? <laughs> you know what? If you're if you're hanging out here, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some oxygen. Don't worry. Here you go. Uh, have as much oxygen as you want. There you go. And you know what? We'll uh, we'll just delete these guys up here. Let's not worry about these guys. Goodbye. There we go. Lindsay's enough. Lindsay will help keep this thing running. So let's see this thing erupt. Any minute now. All right, there we go. So as you can see, the aluminium is coming out as debris. The room is still heating up, so it's, we haven't got any steam in here yet. This water should boil fairly quickly. You'll see that the hot metal is being loaded onto the conveyor rail and... The oil itself was already below 200 degrees, so a little bit of metal actually got let out first, and that's going to continue to get cooled down in this room. But now the now the metal mostly isn't at the temperature. So all that water boiled. So now we've got the steam in here. The steam is warming up, and some of it's condensing over here because it's contacting the oil. That's fine. We look at this um, again. You can see. Have I done something wrong here? 
This needs to be connected here. Yeah. Connect that. <laughs> connect that there so it actually gets drawn to the shutoff. So now we've got... Now we've got relatively hot metal coming through here, but it's going to get cooled very quickly in the oil. And what we'll do, this volcano has stopped erupting now, but I'm going to keep manually adding in molten aluminum just to show you what's going on. So the metal is going to warm up the room, but the room is being continuously cooled by the Thermo Aqua Tuner. So we've got some metal up here. This metal's already nice and cool. It's going to conduct heat very quickly with the liquids. And that all that cold metal is going to come out here and just get dumped out of this chute onto Lindsay's head. There we go. <laughs> Lindsay managed to dodge it. Excellent. Good job. So now, just to continue to demonstrate how this works, we're going to keep dumping uh, molten aluminium on it. Do not dump 1,000 kilograms at a time. That is not what a volcano does. We'll just dump 10 kilograms every second, and that will show you roughly how this works. We'll just do this for a little bit. We'll get the steam temperature up nice and high. Now, because we built all the conveyor rail out of steel, you'll notice it's not melting. We're just going to keep getting the room up to the 200 degrees. And then we'll start dumping in, we'll start dumping in some more water, and then we'll get the steam pressure up. So let's just keep doing this. So now we're going to keep dumping in some more water, and then these steam turbines are actually going to activate now the pressure is high enough. Uh, so because this room is at 200 degrees C, the steam turbines are going to be running at max power. So you're going to get 1.7 kilowatts out of this. And what you'll notice is the aqua tuner and the shutoffs and everything, including the gas pump, all add up to less than 1700 watts. You could even... You could even plug a liquid pump into this, and because it's only going to be running two-fifths of the time, it should still generate enough power. So what we're going to do now is we're going to disable the dead pump, and we're just going to connect this wire here. Just to show you. Just to show you that it's, it's going to work. And you'll see it's keeping the battery nice and topped up. It's still running. All of the 95 degrees water is going out into the liquid reservoir for use in our electrolyzers. All the dirt is coming out as well and getting dropped off here. You can see we've got some aluminium. You can see we've got some dirt. Yeah, I would rec I would say overall. Overall, the build can be power positive, but you wouldn't want to connect it all up directly. You would want to feed it with power from a different source just to make sure that it doesn't break and then just take excess power off whenever you can from the steam turbines. I think that's the best way of handling that. Yeah, overall, that's the build. So so this device will let you get the hot metal from the volcano. It will let you cool it down to room temperature. So you can use it for your building and stuff without your dupes having to get into exosuits. They'll obviously have to get into exosuits to get into this room. But once once uh, this is all set up, you can just seal this off again if you want. Um, so it gets you the cold metal and it actually sends you... It actually lets you boil polluted water or salt water so that you can purify that without having to spend power on that and if you get any polluted oxygen in here for some reason you can pump it out in here still and I, it should be noted as well this build will work for any metal volcano I've used an aluminium volcano because it generates the most heat and you're trying to boil the water but you can do this with a gold volcano or any volcano really and you'll get the room temperature metal out Gold volcanoes generate so little heat that you probably don't need to bother with something like this. But for like iron volcanoes, cobalt volcanoes, etc. This build also works. We'll just boil less water overall. But yeah, once it's built, it doesn't actually need any maintenance. Just make sure to plug some input power in and take the excess power out. And sometimes it will balance out and sometimes it won't. But yeah. Thanks for watching. If you like this build, feel free to subscribe on YouTube and you'll get notifications when I do more sandbox showcase videos or we'll solve some more problems. We're going to do a video about magma volcanoes fairly soon. They're a little bit more complicated, but I have some other ideas as well, including some ranch builds and some rocket interiors you'll see soon. We're also uh, currently streaming Arboreal Airheads, which is our mouth breathers run on Folia spaced out. We've just started that, and we're having a lot of fun with that. We stream on Twitch Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, usually. Usually Oxygen are included with some other games. 
And uh, there is also the Discord channel where we like to hang out and post memes and builds and things. There's a lot of discussion about oxygen not included in there. If you have a question that you don't know the answer to, chances are someone will be there to answer it. But uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'll hopefully see you later. Bye for now. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, we <laughs> we didn't kill Lindsay this time.